What's up, Andrew? I'm going to be playing some more Crusader Kings 2 today. I figured since the announcement of Assassin's Creed Valhalla was today, I would go ahead and uh, play as uh, Ragnar's dad in the Viking era. Hopefully to pass the throne on to Ragnar, um, but we'll have to, I'll have to get into a little bit more explanation about how inheritance works in uh, tribal communities. Uh, so to start, I should actually probably say... I turned off the mod that makes the map uh, look more map-like. Uh, I think it's the cartographic map mod, something like that. I don't know. I could totally have screwed up that name. Uh, but it was something along those lines. Uh, and so in order to play as Ragnar, we're going to start off as his dad, Seagirder Ring, uh, King Seagirder Ring. And, uh, yeah, let's just dive right in. No sense in explaining. You've watched the first series, and, uh, at this point, it's just, uh... I mean, there'll be definitely some differences, but I'll explain them as we go along. It's gonna be different, uh, first off, because we're gonna be pagan. We're not gonna be Catholic. We're gonna be tribal, not feudal. Uh, we're gonna be, uh, Norse in our culture, not Anglo-Saxon. So, I. Uh, you don't need to read that. I'll go over a little bit of this. So, uh, Norse culture effects. Uh, we're allowed to raid overseas with ships. We can raid infidels' neighbors for loot. For loot, not loots. And uh, can raise rune stones up until year 1150. That's, uh, that's important to remember. I'll try to do some of that. Uh, as tribal, tribes are settled but agrarian. Each county can only have one tribal holding representing the entire local tribal population. The more empty holding slots, the more powerful the tribal holding. Tribal rulers are most often seen using the elective gavelkind secession law, which tends to fragment the realm between the sons on the death of a chief. That is a problem. We're going to be trying to get out of elective gavelkind secession. Um, we'll get into that soon. Um, yeah, we can hold tribal and fort holdings without penalties, can hold temple and tribal, can build temple, tribal, and fort holdings. Uh, uses prestige to build tri uh, tribal holdings, can call tribal government vassals to arms instead of using liege, but uh, lots of stuff, lots of important stuff to remember. Um, if there's anything here, is there anything to point out, I guess? Uh, male rulers can take up to three concubines. That's sort of important to remember. Uh, yeah, that's fine. Uh, in the early Middle Ages, yeah, I mean, this is just the Middle Ages, uh, this is going over the, whatchamacallit, uh, whatever that is, I don't remember. It's fine. We're going. We're going. Let's play. So, uh, first things first, let's check out our king, uh, King Sigurder, uh, Ring of Svipjob, is how I always say that, but, uh, I could totally screw that up, I don't know. Uh, let's focus for a second on our inheritance. So, we have... Elective, uh, agnatic elective gavelkind, which means that, like I kind of touched on earlier, the kingdom will be split up amongst any sons that my uh, guy has, which is sh crappy. It is not good. I don't want to lose my empire or my kingdom or whatever due to this. Uh, actually, by the time we get a kingdom, I'm pretty sure it would no longer be split up, or maybe it's empire. I don't remember. Either way, we're not going to let this happen. Uh, and in order to make sure, because we've got an extra bit of uh, something to pay attention to, I don't know how to describe it, we've got an extra complication thrown in here, is we want to play as Ragnar. But because of our secession laws, if the other son, because it's elective gavel kind, if the other son gets the main title, if, if my guy has another son, I don't have one right now, but if he does and the other son gets the main title, then we might not play as Ragnar. We might play as, I don't know, whatever the other son's name would be, Bjorn. We'll, we go, we'll throw that out there. Uh, but we want to play as Ragnar. We really do because although he doesn't have it yet, he will have a bloodline associated with him automatically. He doesn't have to do anything other than survive to the point that he gets a bloodline, which I think is when he turns 16 and becomes an adult. It might be younger, I'm not sure. Um, but he will get a bloodline automatically, but that bloodline will not extend to his brothers or sisters. So, 
It's going to be complicated, but we're going to be able to do it. Because what I'm going to do is not have any more suns. And I'm going to put all of my eggs into the Ragnar basket. So one, this is probably... People that are more experienced at this game are probably looking at this and thinking, like, this is really dumb. And it is. But it's not that dumb if I want to play as Ragnar. I mean, it's still not great, but... I'm going to divorce my wife. Right off the bat. Uh, I am going to be Ragnar's guardian. Let's see. Um. Not even going to worry about any laws right now. Uh, another thing to keep in mind is since we're starting, we, we're not starting at the 867 start date, I, I think that's what that was. We're starting at 769, which is the only way to play as Ragnar eventually. You have to start as dad at 769. Um, so we're even less technologically advanced than we would be, and also being Norse, uh, we are automatically... Oh my gosh, why does my mouse keep doing that? Uh, yeah, we're we're less technologically advanced just inherently because we're in this area of the world. At I think pretty much everything, maybe not tolerance. No, nope, we are more or we are less advanced in tolerance. Yeah, pretty much everything it looks like. Infantry. Yeah. So things we'll keep in mind. Let's see how many troops we could raise. We could raise roughly two thousand if we wanted to. Uh, oh, another thing to touch on. Uh, we are Germanic Pagan. This allows us to do a couple different things. Uh, and I've already kind of touched on the unique things that it allows us to do. But additionally, because we are not a reformed religion, we are a pagan religion that is not reformed, we have the opportunity to reform our religion. Um... I forget where the button is. Is it this one? Uh, maybe. It, may, it might be that. I don't remember where the button is. But in order to reform our religion, we actually have to... Um, yeah, this this is how you do it. I guess once I get the realms. I have to take... Uh, I believe it's three of the five holy sites in our religion. Which would include... Uh, Pathurga, down here. That's one of the holy sites. Uh... Tholen, or Zeeland, Zeeland, over here. Uppsala, which we actually already have. That's up here in Upland. Uh, here in Shayland, Shayland. I don't remember how to pronounce that, but in that area, we have to conquer that realm or take that holding of some sort. Uh, and then up here in Nidoros, uh, the Temple of Mayor. And yeah. So if we can combine all of those realms under our rule, at least those holdings, then we can reform our religion. Thanks to thanks to watch. Uh, and I will go ahead and join the Wolf Warrior Society. I will gladly fight this guy in order to do it. Uh, King Haraldur of Sealand of the Wolf Warriors greets me with a brief nod. Another recruit, huh? You like my you like my voice acting here? I'm actually trying out to be a voice actor in the future, so I'm, I'm going to take this very, very seriously. To join our ranks, you need to prove yourself, boy. Uh, I think uh, the southern uh, KFC colonel is maybe coming out a little bit. Uh, the man says gruffly, folding his arms across his chest. You'd be fighting one of our own. Still interested, my lord? I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop while I'm ahead. Uh, I'll gladly fight to prove myself. All right. First things first. Let's take care of these notifications up here. Uh, important decisions. None of these are super important. I can't make a runestone. So yeah, none of these are super important. Successor nomination. I will nominate Ragnar as my successor. That doesn't necessarily mean he's going to be my successor. That just means I've nominated him. Um, pick an ambition. So, typically, I would not say 
your ambition right off the bat should be to become the king of the kingdom that you are de jure a part of. But because we are pagan, uh, unreformed pagan, and we are elective gavelkind, we have the opportunity to use the subjugation casus belli unlimited amounts of times until we unite our kingdom, which is going to come super in handy in this case. So I will go ahead and make that my uh, ambition. And my focus will be on warfare. Uh, I can set my crown focus. I'm going to choose Upland here as my crown focus. Uh, I can grant some minor titles. I'll name my region in case I have to go into hiding. I will find a court physician. I guess this guy will do. And let's see the commanders. Oof. There's really no one better to be my commanders right now. There will be eventually. Um, and I am not going to get married. I know it says I should get married. I am not going to get married because then they could have a kid. I have to worry about that kid being named successor. I've gone into it. Let's play. No more wasting time. All right. So right off the bat, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look down here to the south to Oster Gotland. Okay, here we go. I, I'll, I'll touch on this first. Uh, King Heralder, Wartooth, and the Wolf Warriors have chosen Horfin of Gotland as my opponent. The Stotch man eyes me up and down when we are introduced. Fresh meat, eh? He offered mockingly before shoving an elbow into my side, making everyone laugh. So it's this guy. He's got a really low combat skill. I'm not that afraid of losing to him. As the duel begins, Porfin of Gotland comes at me slowly. I offer him my best taunting smile, and it does not take long before I have seen to whack my wooden staff into his leg. I walk away victorious. I gain prestige, monthly prestige. I gain that. Uh, he's wounded. Not my guy. The other guy's wounded. He's got a swollen ankle. I, I, hit, I tapped him with a wooden sword. I didn't, you know, stab him or anything like that. Um, so yeah, first things first. I'm going to go here, and I... Oh, hold up. Let me check how many troops I've got that I can raise. Oh, I can raise more than him. I feel safe doing this. I'm going to declare a war of subjugation on my southern neighbor, Oster Gotland, and immediately raise levies and call my allies. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and take up a defensive position on that river there. To the valiant King Sigurder of Spitjad, I am told that you did not receive a single scratch during your initiation. That is the kind of impressive warrior we would be honored to have sitting at our table. You are hereby humbly invited to join our ranks. Finally. Alright, so as you can see, we're getting uh, troops from our vassals. They're raising their troops, and they're going to join up and meet us here in Ostergotland, most likely. Uh... Problem is, I don't have direct control over them. I can try to highlight them all I want. It's not going to do anything until... Oh, see? They're dumb. They're attacking me across river. They're going to have to deal with that uh, penalty. Plus, I'm going to go ahead and reinforce these troops over here. We should knock this battle out of the park. I'm hoping. Yeah, we'll be there in two days. In one day, this reinforcement will get there. And we're definitely winning that battle. Oh, I should go ahead. Realm view. Uh, yeah, obviously, you know, can't really... It's harder to read like this. Now, I probably will put it more onto the terrain view when I'm playing up here and there's a lot more snow to keep track of the seasons because there's going to be combat penalties and such when you're fighting in snow and bonuses potentially if I get... Uh, there's some trait that I can get, which actually, I didn't even look at this guy's traits that closely. I, I at least didn't go over it. I should have. Um, I kind of glanced at it and realized that, yeah, he's meh. He's, meh. Um, he's a skilled tactician. He's quick. He's brave. He is shy, which is a diploma, uh, diplomacy penalty and a personal combat penalty. Personal combat. Uh, he's deceitful, and he is content. Um... And yeah, as you can see, his main skills that are, you know, worth anything are Intrigue and Martial. 
So, and obviously personal combat. He's, you know, pretty good in personal combat for this time in, like, history, I guess. Uh, work can be tedious, and when one problem is solved, another one pops up. I tire of having to complete the same tasks over and over again. Dude, you're about to be in battle. What are you talking about? Uh... Yeah, it's fine. He gained the trait. He gained stressed. So he's stressed. Oh well. I, You know, this guy is just kind of holding the seat until Ragnar is of age. Once Ragnar's of age, Ragnar's going to get married, have concubines, you know, have a bunch of kids to pass on that bloodline. I'll, uh, I'll speed it up a little bit. I feel like, uh, you know, no sense in taking our time here. I feel pretty confident that we should be fine in this battle. Oh, look at that. They The AI can't seem to figure out what they want to do, I don't think. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll go and attack them there. The Battle of Nariki. This campaign has been easy pickings. Yes, it has. So far. Swinging my sword over the plains is a pleasure, and my fellow soldiers are equally jovial, surrounded by the blood of our Norse enemies and cries of battle. Look! Enemy commander Eilfgear is hiding! Someone suddenly shouts, pointing off in the distance. There you are, I've been itching for a fight. Um... Let's check his personal combat skill. Oh, his personal combat skill is super low. Mine is six times that, so... Wait! I yield! Elf gear cries out. My spear high. I slow the deadly blow about to come down on the enemy. The man scrambles backwards, almost tripping over himself. I'll be your prisoner. Spare my life, he whimpers. So, I could sacrifice him to Odin. Doing so, uh, he would be offered up to the gods in exchange for good fortune. King Sigurdr Ring may, gets made a battlefield sacrifice, which is just one of these things. It's not a trait, it's a modifier. Uh, I had to check what that was called again. I just know it's these things. Uh, that's not a trait, that's just a modifier, so it does go away at a certain point in time. Um, yeah, until 28th of March 772, so the next three years I would get that effect. Uh, it raises my personal combat skill by five, zealous opinion by five, and it kills that guy. Alternatively, I could imprison him and try to ransom him later. I'm going to kill him. I'm hoping, uh, you know, I'm in the Wolf Warriors. I'm really hoping that being in the Wolf Warriors, I'll be able to move up in the ranks pretty quickly. And, uh, you know, I just kind of want to be the best in terms of uh, personal combat and, you know, fighting and killing everyone. And yeah, so far in terms of battles, we're kind of decimating the enemy. Uh, not the Roman definition of decimating. I'm sure you know that that just means one in every ten men got killed or whatever. Uh, I don't know why I went on that little information session, but uh, let's just get back to the game. Alright, we won that battle. Uh, they're invading again. We're going to win that battle. Yeah, honestly, uh, we're, we're pretty fortunate that the AI has made some bad moves and just, you know, kind of kept slaughtering their men at us. Uh, Bertil is captured in battle and is now my prisoner. Uh, he will make a suitable sacrifice to Odin. Hail fledgling, as members of the Wolf Warriors, we strive to better ourselves and each other. One way is the occasional sparring match. For practice and honor, seek out and duel the warrior Friedrich... Frederick. Sounds weird to say Frederick when in, like, the Norse uh, mindset of, like, it, it... I mean, that might not be how you say it, but I'm gonna call it Frederick, because that's easier. You'll find him in Skane. Signed, King Haraldr. I accept. Okay, so this guy, they want me to duel him. He is significantly powerful. I mean, he's not significantly more powerful. He, he's powerful, but, uh... We can probably still take him. Hopefully.
Yeah, I'm really not worried about losing this war at this point. We just need to occupy some more areas and we'll win. Uh, we'll have to fight across river, which isn't fun, but I don't want to lose my territory that I just conquered. And we do double their forces, so I'm not too worried. Yeah, we only lost 86 men, and we won the battle. Let's move down here to Vista. And we should... Uh, I'll let it siege out, that way I don't have to waste any more men. Oh, no, 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 no! Stop, 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 gosh! I let it go too fast, and I actually could have ended the war. Dang it. That's me just jumping the gun and fast-forwarding way too fast, and then we lost that uh, realm. Alright, just take this place back and we'll be good. There's only 14 men. Go. Sweet. Alright, we won the war. That's slow time. Let's uh, go here, offer peace, enforce my demands, yes. We usurp the title of Jarldrum of Ostergotland from Hjvordjar of Vista. Uh, the Swedish East Giddish War, uh, subjugation war is ended. King Seater of Spipjod won. So now we own all of this land. And typically, if we did not have that ambition... Uh, uh, become the King of Sweden ambition. If we didn't have that, then we would have to struggle... Not struggle, but we would have to gain other Cassus Belli to declare war on the next people. But because we've got that ambition, what I can go ahead and do... Let me just make sure I've got enough men. I might want to let my levies raise back up again. And actually, I should assign my council to do stuff rather than just completely forget they exist like I've done so far. Um, uh, let's see... I will improve religious relations. I don't really know. I mean, with this guy, I'm really not sure. Build zeal. I'll build zeal. So building zeal is unique. I don't know if it's unique to Norse or if it's unique to Germanic pagans. I'm not really sure. Um, but since I'm building zeal, what that does, I mean, you can read it there, but I'll explain it. What it does is that attracts troops to come to fight for me. Now, these troops, if I'm building zeal, I'm pretty sure the troops can only be used to fight against uh, infidels, like non-pagan, uh, non-Germanic pagans. Um, but so for the Norse people, there's actually a few different ones. Uh, my stu like that are unique. It's either Norse or it's Germanic pagan. I'm actually forgetting what makes these unique. Uh, you know, options here. But uh, I can build legend, which allows me to get people, attract people to come. Those people that come can only be used to raid, which I'll have to explain raiding because I haven't actually... You, you saw people raid me in the other game. Now, since I am... Uh, I'm pretty sure it's because I'm Germanic Pagan. Uh, I have the opportunity to raid others, which I'm not conquering their lands, I'm just looting it. Uh, and once again, organized raid. So, yeah. Uh, I'm going to train troops in Upland. I am going to sow descent in Vestergotland. I will study technology in Constantinople. Oh, zoomed in too far. Constantinople. And last but not least, oh, I am not in Wessex this time. I am in Spitjod. I will oversee construction with this guy in Upland. And as you see, all of these people kind of suck. Um, none of them are that good in terms of their skills. Really, when you're at the earlier start date, at least 
I found, once again, I'm not that experienced in this game, but I have found when you're at the earlier start date, it's harder to find people that are, you know, what you want. Uh, additionally, I have the problem of when I'm playing as a unreformed Germanic pagan, I'll invite people to my court. They're not necessarily of the Germanic pagan uh, faith. And then I've got to deal with uh, that. Okay, so this actually gives me a good chance to kind of uh, slow down and allow the uh, troops to raise back up in my military, my vassal levies and such. I am threatening. It's going to take me a few years to become unthreatening. But in that time, I will be raising money. So I can actually already form the Kingdom of Sweden because I own over 51% of the realms associated with it, with the de jure Kingdom of Sweden. Um, I need a lot more gold, and I need piety. No, I don't need piety. I, I should be good on piety. I don't know why it's in red. Right? I've got 140. Yeah, I don't know why it's in red. I've got enough piety. So yeah, I I'll need to do that, but for now, uh, I'm just gonna, you know, sit tight. Do what I do best. I can offer vassalization, but really until I uh, become the king, it's going to be tough to do that. Yeah, none of these people are going to accept vassalization to me. So. But I do have to watch out for Vestergotland, because they'll be the ones that are going to be the most annoying in terms of trying to take over their land. So... But we've got a good start off right off the bat, so I'll just kind of sit tight and, uh, you know, see about maybe building some of these. Uh, so I do need to think about what I need in order to become feudal. I don't really remember. I need an earth hill for it. That's what I need. I need gold for that. Okay. My studies and training have taught me the general tactics of flanks and center, but I can hardly master everything. Um, I'll be a trickster. Experimentality, experimentality, plus 30%. Um, I don't know if that's the right decision, but we'll do it. All right, and while I'm kind of waiting, I will duel Frederick. Godi Frederick of Lund has chosen to accept your challenge for personal combat. The duel will take place in the next few days. Uh, demonstration duel. Let's do it. Ah, crap. Ugh. Just as I swing my wooden staff in a perfect half circle, causing him to fall backwards with a surprised puff, Godi Frederick manages to swing his dull spear in a perfect half circle, causing me to fall backwards with a surprised puff. Dizzy, I can just about make out the sounds of the crowd. It is not my name they are chanting. I lose the duel. I am wounded. I... Okay, I only get, uh, whatchamacallit, a swollen wrist. That is not bad. I'm not blind. I'm not, you know, disfigured. I'm good. That, that's really not bad. I could... I think I can conquer these people, actually. I can... S no. Yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to have to deal with all those allies. Since the duel, I've been practicing a bit with Godi Frederick. The man did best me, and I was quick to ask for any pointers. He seemed surprised at first, but today I'm proud to tell him that he's a good teacher and friend. He's my friend, you know. It, it, what is a little bit of bloodshed between friends, right? Uh, there's no shame in acknowledging a worthy opponent, or I could do that and become proud. Uh, I mean. See, I, I kind of want to acknowledge that he's my friend and get a good relationship with him. Not that it really matters. I would rather become proud. Once again, proud, the trait, proud, uh, will gain my monthly prestige plus 0.5. Or up my monthly prestige plus 0.5. So now I am making 2.27 prestige every month. Just naturally. And then obviously any actions I do in the world that result in prestige... Uh, I'll get that as well. So. See, I kind of want to... I just really want to keep on conquering. 
but I don't want to have to deal with any sort of uh, defensive attacks against me. Because I'm sure... Are y'all in the defensive attacks? Doesn't look like y'all are. Now, I'll be patient. I need to raise up my levies more anyways, so... Oh, yeah. I mean, there's really... No one to worry about, I don't think, in terms of that defensive pack. How did I get a scar from a swollen wrist? I thought I had a swollen wrist. Like a, a scar on my face? I guess it... I mean, the icon is a face, but I guess... Yeah, I got a scar on my face. Whatever. It, you know, hit my wrist and I get it cut below my cheek. That makes sense. Okay, I could imprison this guy. Uh, what did he do? I don't know. I can ask him to end his plot. He won't. What is his plot? Oh, he's trying to fabricate a claim on my land. Huh. I've got a 42% chance of succeeding if I try to imprison him. Do it. Alright, he did not get captured, now he's rebelling. So, let's raise my troops. And we will deal with the, the traitor. And everyone's joining my side. And we won the battle. Now we're just going to siege his place, which should be pretty quick. And, uh, yeah. I mean, we're going to win this very easily. Uh, but we do need to find a new marshal. Hrafran? Hrafran? Hrafran, chief of Chist. To Just. Yeah, you thought my pronunciation was bad with all the Welsh names. Now just get ready for all these Norwegian Scandinavian names. Uh, to the brave King Sigurdr, uh, your wisdom and mercy are legendary. We surrender under these terms. He will lose 200 prestige. He'll be imprisoned by me, and I'll gain pre uh, 50 prestige. Yeah, I accept your offer. And then let's lower my levies. You know, I could just go ahead. It's really not a big deal if I go ahead and just conquer these guys to take care of them before they gain too much power, right? I mean, to be honest with you, I think that's only prudent. Oh, geez, I'm losing a lot of money. Okay, I'm back to I'm back to the green. It was probably just still carrying over from when I had my levies raised. You know what? I will do it. Do it. Do it now. All right, let's go. Let's go, boys. Vikings assemble! Um, yeah, you know what? Go ahead. Let, let's let's jump into battle. Uh, actually, you. I will wait. I'll wait for him. Because I don't want him to just get slaughtered. These guys are going to go reinforce right there. So they will reinforce. We'll get some defensive bonus. We're not necessarily across a river or anything, but we will get some defensive bonus, I think. Plus, all my allies should join in. Yep, see, now we're evenly matched. We've got this guy coming in. We'll be, well, have more than them. All right, in my studies of warfare, I've come to realize that clever tactics on the battlefield is only part of the story. There are other disciplines of equal importance. Um, I could be an inspiring leader, giving me 15%... Uh, bonuses to morale, damage, and defense. I could be a siege leader. I'm going with siege leader almost assuredly. Uh, or I could be an organizer. I actually feel like organizer is a bit of a, a trap. I'm sure other people would tell you it's really good. And I see, I mean, I've had it where it's advantageous. But sometimes with organizer, the troops that I am leading will get ahead of the rest of the troops. 
and they'll jump into battle with only like 200 people and the rest of the like 4,000 person ar army is like way back behind them. So yeah, I I'm going to go Siege Leader. Siege Leader, to me, seems like the best choice. Seriously, if you're someone who is more experienced ever watching this video, I doubt anyone watches these videos other than you, Andrew. But uh, if you are more experienced and know better, comment, let me know why I'm wrong. Go ahead, shove it in my face, make me eat my shoe. I don't care. I'd rather know the right thing because at least, you know, the right strategies because Lord knows I'm not great at this game, so... Yeah, he's calling in some allies, but I don't have to worry too much. Hrofren of Holland was captured in battle. Should I sacrifice him? I will hold on to him. I might sacrifice him later. The foul tadpole Hrofren went on a wild rampage through my dungeon and escaped the town. As the madman beat through anyone who came in his path, my poor vassal... Sverker was caught in the crossfire. Oh, he escaped. I will hunt him down. I should have sacrificed him, darn it. Eh, you know, you win some, you lose some. The Battle of Skara. Each swing of my sword has sent me deeper into the enemy territory. Before I know it, I am surrounded with a burst of energy. I roar loudly, causing a few of the men to hesitate, and one unfortunate soldier to stagger backwards, tripping over a rock. I can't help but notice that he drops his weapon in the snow. I'll take that blade and send you back to Odin with it. Sweet. Okay, let me point this out, because I will probably forget to do it later. So I've gained something to add to my treasure. I gained this knife or a sword. Is it a sword or a knife? Knife of the Plains. It's a low-level artifact. Um, artifact, I guess? I don't know. It's a low-level treasure thing. Uh, it raises my leading the center, plus 5%, monthly prestige, plus 0.25, and personal combat skill, plus 5. Um Yeah, I mean, you know, it doesn't hurt to have it in my thing. I will probably, you know, not have it equipped very long, because I've got... I'll have other options. But for now, that's fine. Oh, I'm still paused. I was wondering why nothing was happening. Yeah, we'll win that battle pretty decisively. I'll probably move this army up here, divide my forces a little bit. Riding over the plains, I see a group of pompous soldiers coming from my unit, weapons raised. When they are finished with us, all my men are dead. I sink to the knees in the snow, wondering why I'm still here. I could battle him. Yeah, I feel like I would win this battle. I've got... 49 combat skill. Do it. A duel on the plains. My grip is cramping around the knife of around my knife of the plains. He's using the artifact thing as Gudmunder. Gudmunder. If you are Scandinavian uh, and know a better way to pronounce Gudmunder, once again, comment in the comments. I'm not getting anyone to watch these videos other than you, Andrew, but it's worth throwing out there. Uh, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Hit that bell notification button. Don't want to miss out on these exciting videos, right? Um, uh, the following moments are a blur. Blood suddenly everywhere. Somebody shouting, Did King Seagutter just sever his head from his body? Yes. Yes, I did. I, I, I don't, I, do I have audio on? If not, that would sound really weird. I think I do have audio playing, so that way you would have heard the guy just screamed that out in the game. I hope so, or else he would have just heard me do that, and that'd be pretty embarrassing. Hail, fledgling. As members of the Wolf Warriors, we strive to better ourselves and each other. One way is the occasional sparring match. Yes, okay, you want me to duel this guy? I'll, I'll duel him. Oh, I can't because I'm in battle. Or is it because I've got my levies raised? 
I'll duel him eventually. I can't right now. Hmm. Speed up just a tiny bit. Let's move this army down here. This army will win this soon and we'll conquer Dahl. Dale. Like, uh, what's his name? Pitbull. Right? Pitbull or is that Flo Right? No, that's Pitbull. Not Flo Right. Uh, yeah, we, we lost a place. It's fine. We're going to win this war, I have no doubt. Oh, we can already win the war. Offer peace, enforce my demands. So, we won. We have taken all of these lands now. Uh, let's just make something clear. The de jure kingdom of Sweden... Uh, oh, Sweden. Okay, so we conquered a little bit extra land that we technically weren't, you know, supposed to, not, not supposed to, but it's not the de jure part of Sweden. Um, but we got that land, that's good. And then we need to take this, this, this. Yeah, we'll, we'll subjugate these three realms, four realms, and then, oh, this one as well. Yeah. I mean, it'll be really easy from here, so. Uh, let me just, once again, lower my levies. And let's just click play. And figure out what to do with my idle council members. Um, with you, I will perform statecraft. And with you, I will train troops in uh, Upland. Yeah, I'm still threatening. I'm going to be threatening for a while. I wish some of these people would accept my vassalization. Or I wish I had the money to, ca uh, to found the Kingdom of Sweden, and then they would accept my vassalization almost certainly. But I think already we've kind of defined ourselves as the main power in Scandinavia. Uh, Jaland is also going to be difficult, but I'd imagine they're also elective gavelkind. Um, I mean, they're tribal, they're pagan. Yeah, they're probably elective gavelkind. So I am pretty sure that because of that, their kingdom is going to get divided somehow. So we'll, we'll have to watch that. Um, but either way, even with them being united, I am still probably more powerful than them, right? Eh. I mean, we're about even right now, but, uh, at least in terms of the levies we can raise. Oh, I never picked an education focus for you, Ragnar. Uh, you should focus on struggle. I never really showed it. Uh, the interest, one of the interesting things about this game, is you can click this Wikipedia link here if it's a character that exists in the real world or real history, and you can follow that, and it'll take you to Wikipedia, and you can just read about the character. So if I clicked that, I mean you won't be able to see because I'm not recording my monitor. I'm recording the window, but uh, it would pull up the Wikipedia link. So see, it's educational. Am I still, uh, yeah, I'm still studying Constantinople technology, I'm sure. Um, you know what, let's just go ahead and subjugate these guys. Or this. 
Your daily routine involves repeatedly swinging your blade at a training dummy. However, you can only learn so much from fighting an enemy, and the practice gets dreadfully dull after a while. Uh, I will ask Sigbjorn to be my friend and train with me. Oh, actually, speaking of, I needed to challenge this guy to a duel. Uh, Ragnar says his favorite toy is missing and he won't go to bed without it. I may have thrown it out today when I was tidying up. I will try to find it. I found the toy Ragnar was crying about after going through the trash, but now he is not satisfied because it smells. Okay, well, he's fussy. Sorry about that, Ragnar. Let's go ahead, duel this guy. Hopefully he doesn't beat me. If he beats me, it's fine. A uh, duel will take place in a few days. Uh, as the duel begins, Ingolfer comes at me slowly. I offer him my best taunting smile, and it does not take long before I have seen to injure him. I won the fight. Do I still have people in my prison? No, I do not. And now I can rank up in the society to the rank of warrior. So now I will no longer be called a fledgling. Every time the guy reaches out to me, I'll be warrior. After the duel, Ingolfer asked for me for advice on fighting. A little taken aback, I happily trained, offered to train with him on occasion. Today he thanks me for being a good teacher and friend, he adds, dunking me, dunking me on the back before he cocks his head in direction of the sparring grounds. Dunking me on the back. I've never heard that phrase before. Is that just like patting him on the back or... I don't know. I've never heard that before. Uh, they want to arrange a marriage with my courtier. Oh, yep, I can advance to the next rank. Kingdom of Saxony. Sure, I'll marry her off. Let me turn off the Jure Realms. See, I really just want to subjugate people, but, you know, some of these people are in that defensive pack, so. Now, this guy's not. Uh, I'll, I'll wait a little bit longer. And I lose the trait stress. That's good. And I need a new steward. This guy. Gear, commander of whatever. Let's go ahead. Have him oversee construction and spit god. And let's construct... Can I really not construct an earth hill fort? Uh, I gotta wait a little bit. What are some of these other ones that I could construct. Yeah, I'm gonna wait. Jeez, how much? Just another few months, I guess. Uh, training fight is a dangerous thing. Sometimes the sword might strike too hard. Sigbjorn gains the trait wounded. So I wounded my sparring partner. Oh well. To the great, uh, great king's king... To the great king, King Sigurder, staying idle is not in a warrior's blood. I hence invite you to aid me against my enemies. I promise to put in a good word for you at the Lodge based on your participation in the war. Um, who are your enemies? Yeah, I mean, you're just fighting peasants. So yeah, I'll do that. That'll give me something to do while we wait for some of this uh, threatening meter to go down. Oh, jeez. You actually have a real revolt going on. That's... This might take a little bit longer. Um, I hate taking all my troops out of here. Because if I get a revolt, I gotta bring them back. But we'll, we'll just kind of follow it. Let's have them all meet up together. Okay. Let's sail across the channel there. Airman's soul destroyed as the bitter war in Saxony rages on the armies of King Harl of West Francia have captured Paderborn, the site of the great shrine of the Holy Tree of Airman's soul. By order of the conquering king, the troops burned the holy tree and then proceeded to destroy the entire shrine. This has infuriated people of the Germanic religion everywhere. Yeah. Uh, so basically what he did was... Wait, which one is it? Ur Ursmansel. 
he destroyed the shrine there. Which doesn't sound like a big deal, but it's a big deal. So, that's bad. Uh, do I have to worry about factions right now? Breaking loose? Uh, not really. I don't think so. Oh, wait, I wasn't out. I wasn't declaring war on the, whatchamacallit, I was declaring war on West Francia. That's a lot more of a challenging enemy than I thought at first. But I'll, uh, I'll kind of mess around and, you know, raid a little bit, maybe even loot. I can't set my people to loot anymore. So once you leave your own territory, you can no longer set your people to loot. Once you leave your territory, they're set as either conquerors or looters. So, yeah, we're looting, whether we wanted to or not. Uh, oh, I get... Yeah, that's already taken, so I'll take the Weimar. Weimar? I like the Weimar Republic. I never made that connection. So yeah, we are at war with West Francia, which is probably ruled by King Carl of West Francia. So. Oh, there's going to be a battle over there. I should probably go meet up with my allies, help them. Come on, dude. Let's let's do this together. Let's you attack first, and then I'll join and reinforce. I'll I'll just wait. Yeah, I'm kind of waiting on uh the AI guy to come and decide he wants to take on these troops over here. I'm not attacking across river and dealing with that penalty, plus they outnumber me already. I'm not dealing with that. I might just move up there, because it's more likely they try to go north and attack, I'd imagine. Yep, they're attacking me across river. Come on, back me up, dude. Are you gonna back me up? Are you gonna do anything? Yep, okay, he's coming with a lot more troops. I just gotta hold out, come on, don't lose. Okay, sweet, we got reinforced. Uh, this campaign has been easy picking. Swinging my longsword over the plains is a pleasure and my fellow soldiers are equally jovial, surrounded by the blood of our Frankish enemies in the price of battle. Look, enemy commander, Duke, Duke Hugh. Duke Hugh is hiding. Some, someone suddenly shouts, pointing off in the distance. Oh, he's got zero combat skill. I will fight him. I won. My grip is cramping around my knife of the plane, says Duke Hugh, braces for another attack. The following moments are a blur. Blood suddenly everywhere. Somebody shouting, did King Seeger just sever the head from his body? Yes, yes, I did. And I am actually going to rename my, uh, whatchamacallit, my Knife of the Plains. I'm going to rename it to the Blade of Woe. Actually, Woe. Blade of Woe. Captured in battle. Bishop Berald of Dockham was captured in battle and is now my prisoner. I will... Last time the prisoner escaped. I will sacrifice him to Odin. Mm. 
Mm, sure, I'll help. Uh, I'll help conquer this land, or not conquer. Uh, take back that land. I'm just gonna kind of hold out there. There's no sense of getting my troops all killed. I feel like I'm the only one really helping him out. I have encountered fledgling Ingolfer many times while carrying out my duties for the Wolf Warriors, and it is always pleasant occasion. We can talk for hours if the time allows, because he never bores me. While our discussions are often lengthy, we always seem to agree on the matters which are most important. Oh, we became friends. That's good. So I help, I've helped out a ton. I think, you know, he needs to be able to handle the rest of the war on its own, and I really want to recuperate my losses, so... Rumors are that great spoils are waiting behind the walls of S of Eastridal tribe, waiting to be conquered by any daring raider with enough grit and ambition. I assume we need to say nothing more. Oh yeah, I can, I can do that. That's easy enough. It'll give me a good chance to explain how looting works as well. And I can invest in a technological advance, and I will invest in siege equipment. What happens if we win this war? Can I find out what happens if we win this war? I guess not. I'll have, to, I'll have to try to figure that out. Either way, I need to lower my vassals, recoup some troops. He will not end his plot. What is his plot? Uh, he's targeting Hawker of Vermeland. I think that's okay. My seer Toki has been discovered charging money for various religious uh, favors, putting the gold in his own pocket. Intolerable. I need to find a new seer. I choose Frederick. Oh, is it the same Frederick from before? That's cool. And I'll build zeal. Now, I haven't even had any uh, zealous raiders join my uh, place yet, but it might happen. I am no longer threatening. I will go ahead and subjugate the people around me now. There's no way they're going to be able to fight off my military at this point, I don't think, so... Let's just march right in. And yeah, we'll pretty quickly win this battle. Yeah, they've already lost the siege, so. I mean, pretty much. Yep, they lost, therefore we win. Yes, I will enforce my demands. I take that land. Uh... You will still not accept my offer of vassalization. Therefore, I will have no choice but to subjugate you. And we should pretty quickly just rush in, knock these guys out, win this war. Yeah, we're pretty close to taking all of the lands that... What the heck is that? Can I kill him? I don't, I don't necessarily know what that means. That might be infighting among my vassals, actually. I think that's what that is. I'm dumb. Sorry about that. I, I'm pretty sure that's what that is, because uh, this guy reports to me, so I don't have to worry about him conquering my own land. Alright, we won that war.
And last, but certainly not least. Oh, I am over the Vassal limit. I should... Uh, what is it? Go here to... Tribal Organization? What does that do? I think it's centralization is what I really want. I will do tribal organization. That doesn't help. I think centralization is what I wanted. Um, what can I do? What can I do? What can I do? I don't actually know what I can do. I can, like, you know, give out titles, but that's not helping my vassal limit. That's just helping my domain size. So I don't know. Either way, I mean, having a vassal limit over is not the worst thing, I guess. So. Let's go ahead. Why can I not declare war? Oh, I'm bankrupt. No! Okay. I gotta get out of uh, bankruptcy. Actually, it's maybe a good time to raise up my troops as raiders. So. What? Oh, I can't raid because I am technically at war with West Francia. Because I made that alliance. So, never mind. Drop you, drop you. So yeah, we are definitely uh, one of the more successful, one of the more powerful kingdoms right now in Scandinavia. Uh, been recording about an hour. I think this is probably a good stopping point for this episode. Uh, as you can see, we're doing pretty well so far. I'm pretty happy with the way this has turned out. Uh, really, in order to unite the de jure kingdom of Sweden, the only two places we need to conquer now are, uh, whatchamacallit, Gotland and, uh, Metalpad. So, hopefully, uh, next episode I'll take those two, uh, hopefully get out of debt and earn enough money in order to actually found the Kingdom of Sweden, because until I can found the Kingdom of Sweden, I do have to worry about having, you know, the throne not passed on to Ragnar, other than I'm not married and not having any other sons. Um... But once again, this is pretty risky. I'd really rather not do this typically. So, either way, these are all conversations for next episode. Thanks for watching, Andrew. It means a lot. Hope you have a great night. And I uh, hope you're enjoying the new series of Crusader Kings 2, playing as Seagirder Ring of Spipjot. And hopefully soon, Ragnar. So, thanks again. Have a good night.